Ya Sir Al Qadi, I accuse you. You are worse than the layman people. You failed. You failed. Well, what's wrong with you? You used to be a good person before. But it's Allah who guides whom He will and misguides whom He will. Yes, Sir Qadi, when you see him on a video, click X. When you hear him, close your ears. Lest you want to be uh, exposed to fitna, and then he will guide you a little bit and then misguide you a lot. Of course, anything that Yasser Qadi says at this point is probably wrong. We are at a point with Yasser Qadi where if he says the sky is blue, I have to double check three, four times, making tremendous discoveries that no one else has ever made. Good stuff with bad stuff. What will resonate with you is the bad stuff that you don't know. There is not just one Sheikh on the globe. There are hundreds of thousands. But the problem is if we keep on saying this one's bad, that one's bad, this one's bad. Take the goodness and leave whatever you consider an error. Leave it out. Take the good, leave the bad. How do you, how do you take the good, leave the bad? Do you know? Do you, everybody knows? Everybody who's listening to every sheikh knows what's good, what's bad? Does the sheikh give you a disclaimer that what I'm about to say is bad? No. Imam Malik ibn Anas says every single one, you take some of what they say and you have to discount some of what they say because of their human nature. Imagine Imam Malik ibn Anas rahmatullahi alayhi said this. How do you take the good, leave the bad? Do you know? Do you, everybody knows? Everybody who's listening to every sheikh knows what's good, what's bad? Does the sheikh give you a disclaimer that what I'm about to say is bad? No. Anyway, in Matthew 19, 20, let me read it. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Luke 10, 17 to 20. Luke 10, 17 to 20. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Now, guys, follow this line of thinking. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. No one can deny Judas is present. He's one of the 72. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you, all of you, authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. If you believe what you read, Judas is one of those whose names are written in heaven, the book of life, because God's desire for Judas was that he would live, not die. Your names are written in heaven. In the book of life, every creature that will exist, his name is there, showing God's intention that he wants every human being to be saved. But as they turn away, never to turn back, he then erases their names one at a time. Where am I getting this from? Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. It's not that only the saved are written. Everyone's written, and those who turn away, their names are then removed. Revelation 3, verse 5. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot out his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Implication. You can be written there, but if you don't overcome and you deny me, then I will erase your name from the book of life. So your name is already there because it shows God's intention. His intention is everyone whom God creates was created to be saved. Everyone. Exodus 32, 32 to 33. Let me further prove to you that names are blotted out. But now, Moses speaking, if you'll forgive their sin, but if not, please blot me out of your book that you have written. Now notice God's response. But the Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. You catch it? The names of all whom God creates, their names are already in the book, showing God's desires that all whom he will create will be saved. So then as you turn away, never to turn back, then your names are erased. Psalm 69, 27 to 28. Notice verse 28. And add to them punishment upon punishment. May they have no acquittal from you. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living. Let them not be enrolled among the righteous. Did you catch it? 
The names of everyone is written in the book of life. Because God's desire is for all of them to live. But then he blots out their names one by one, those who turn away. So God is showing you his intention. Look, my desire is for everyone. Just remain faithful to Christ or turn to Christ. Don't turn away. Because if you do, then I have to erase your name. The fact that 99% of your teachers say something doesn't mean it is the, the correct truth. The fact that you have not heard contrary and all the Mashiach you study with have not heard contrary means nothing. Very few people are brave enough or foolish enough, depending on how you want to look at it, because it comes with cons when you break away, right? To, to, to go outside the box and think for themselves. He has high qualifications. If Allah guides him, we will celebrate. Wallah, we will be very happy. If Allah guides him back to what he was upon, we will be his supporters. I would like his Facebook page and put links on my channel. Well, what's wrong with you? You used to be a good person before, but it's Allah who guides whom he will and misguides whom he will.